If you're like me, you're fed up with disposable technology, with waste and just throwing things away because maybe part of them has stopped working. I nearly had a moment like that recently with my 2008 Apple time capsule, which had been sat up at my parents' place for a while. But in this video, we're going to look at how actually I'd be able to restore it, upgrade the hard drive and bring it back into service as part of my backup strategy. Let's take a look. Apple released the Time Capsule in 2008 as a companion to the fairly new at the time Time Machine that was released with Mac OS X Leopard. It was designed around an Airport Extreme with a server grade hard drive built into it and was the perfect companion to Time Capsule. The idea being that you could back up one or multiple Macs across the network to this device. This was wonderful at the time because if you had a laptop Mac, you had to keep plugging in a backup drive or finding some other solution. Well, Time Capsule solved this problem. I recently had my parents bring a load of old technology down with them, um, mostly so I could see what could be sold, what could be reused. And um, the Time Capsule was among them. I plugged it in, and unfortunately, I heard the dreaded click, click, click of a dead hard drive. But, as it happened, I'd just taken two 4 terabyte drives out of my old Thunderbolt Raider array that I'd sold. I have plans for those drives as well as some new ones that I'm going to acquire. And we'll come to that in another video. So, with the aid of my father's hands, because my eyesight for undoing screws is not amazing and I wanted to get this right, we took the time catcher apart, replaced the hard drive, and here's what we're about to see. Okay, so we have our time capsule here ready to be disassembled now. Um, my skills and my vision is not perfect, so I've enlisted the help of a very able-bodied volunteer in the form of my father. Uh, hi, Dad. Okay, so if we turn over the time capsule, what we'll see is what we have a rubber backing. Now, in true Blue Peter style, we've done this before. This uh, kind of here's one we made earlier. Um, now, we did find that getting this rubber backing off is a little bit tricky because it's held down with glue. So, although it's going to come off really easily, um, we had to use a hairdryer just to loosen up the glue a little bit. And you do want to be careful to do that because otherwise you can very easily tear this rubber. But as you can see, because we've loosened that glue, it's coming off really easily and we get to see the underbelly of a beast. And there we go. So we'll just put that to one side. There are 10 small Phillips head screws. Now these are size zero, so we're using a size zero tip to remove these. And we have a really handy little magnetic um, screw sheet that came with our toolkit and as you can see we're just going to remove these Okay, so with our 10 screws removed, we can now start to remove the back panel. Now, we do need to be very careful because there's a fan on the bottom of the case, and we just need to be very careful we don't snap the fan connector out of this. But as you can see, it does come out quite easy. Now, we're using a little pry tool to get this open. And it would help if you'd removed all the screws. So there's our fan. I'm just going to put that to one side. Now you can remove a fan connector, but we didn't find we actually needed to do that for this video. Now we've got the lid off, we can see the drive. Now the little sort of 
Fuzzy thing you can see is the temperature sensor. So we need to remove this before we remove the drive. So we're going to remove that very gently. Now at the bottom of the drive, you can see that we have our SATA power and data connectors. So we can now lift the drive out of the case, being very careful, of course, not to pull those connectors loose. But they just come out and these are standard SATA power and data. So there's no issues with using any SATA hard drive here. As you can see, the drives come out. So this is our drive. Now, what you can see is on the two sides, we've got these little uh, spacers and these need to be removed. Now, we're able to do this as a screwdriver, but you may find that you need to use a, uh, some pliers to actually get these uh, a little bit loosened. Obviously being very careful not to break those screws because you'll need to insert, install these into the new drive. So that's our old drive and we can put that to one side. Our new drive, this is a four terabyte drive uh, by HGST. HGST. Uh, this actually came from my old RAID array and um, as I mentioned in the introduction, it's great to be able to reuse old hardware. So I'm gonna pass this across. So we're gonna start by putting the standoffs back into the drive. and we'll just tighten those up to make sure they are in there nice and securely. And then we're going to place that back into the time capsule after reconnecting the SATA power and data cables. So that's our new drive installed. We just now need to put the temperature sensor back on to the new drive. And this should just stick down. Perfect. So with the new drive installed, we can put our lid back on. Again, being very careful to make sure that fan connector wire does not get trapped in the case as you're putting this back in. And then we reinsert our 10 screws. Making sure you put all 10 screws back in, folks. Okay, so we now need to put the rubber cover back on. And you just need to press this down into the edges. So, you may want to consider applying the hairdryer to the bottom of the case just to let the glue soften so that things can stick down properly and we'll do that off camera but now we're done um so if we just turn the time capsule around to the back you can get a nice close-up view of the ports so we've got our power input our usb input now that's usb 2 um it is handy for connecting the external hard drive for archiving the data off the internal drive as well as for sharing usb printers we've got our uplink or one input if you're using this as your primary router which i definitely don't recommend in 2022 and then we've got our three gigabit ethernet ports 
and a Kensington lock socket. So if you've got a Kensington lock, uh, you can actually bolt this to something so no one walks off with your backups. So let's get this set up in airport utility and we'll make sure everything's up and running. Okay, so we have airport utility up and running now. This is installed by default in macOS. So we can see we're connected to the internet. Um, I'm connected at the moment through my IMAX Wi-Fi. Uh, sort of doing a little bit of work in the studio, so there's actually no Ethernet uh, running to the IMAX right now. But what I've done is I've connected the time capsule to my existing infrastructure uh, via that one port. So if we go to other Wi-Fi devices, we'll see airport time capsule and we'll click there. And it's going to start preparing the time capsule. Now I've used this before, so it's reading some previous settings. We'll just give this a moment. Here we go, that's fine. So we're gonna call the network time capsule because we're not actually going to use this. And of course, we're going to call our base station this. So I've already copied a password, or rather generated one within one password. Move to next. And it's now verifying my network connections. Now this is the first time this thing has been used for a long time. Now we actually don't want this to create a network in the case, um, but you know what? We're going to adjust this later. Really, we're just going to reset this. Okay, so setup is complete, and now you'll see that our time capsule shows up underneath our internet connection, and it's telling us we've got a few issues here. So, first things first, let's go and deal with those issues. So, internal disk needs repair. Well, that's because uh, the disk was has not been formatted for the time capsule, so we're going to do that now. I'm going to choose a, a race, and we're going to call this time capsule disk. And we're going to do a quick erase in this case, but if you've used this um, drive for anything else in the past, you might want to zero out that data. And it's asking us to confirm. Now, I did check that this was the right drive that I pulled. So it's now erasing the drive for us. And you can see we've got this going in process. And here we go. We can see that we have, there we go. We're getting four terabytes free coming up and that's fantastic. So secure shared disks. Now we can use either the device password, a dedicated disk password, or which is really cool, we could use accounts. Now we'll come back to that in another video, but as you can see, we're up and running. Now there's a few things I need to do. Now, thankfully this is set to DHS DHCP so actually it's just pulling an IP from my network we're actually going to turn off the Wi-Fi and router mode it's been incredibly intelligent and it's detected that this is in bridge mode so we're going to leave that as it is but as you can see we can do DHCP in that or just DHCP well we want to leave this in bridge mode and then press update and we want to continue because we do want these settings saved okay so we have everything up and running and you can see time capsule disk is here um and we are all set up so this is wonderful now the next thing we need to do is just update the firmware so we're currently at version um 7.6.9 as you can see i need to update to 7.8.1 so we are going to do this now and it's downloading the latest firmware Ah, it's preparing me update so i really do like airport utility now there is a version for windows so if you are on windows you do have the ability to configure this of course you won't be able to use time capsule but you can still access the disk And there we go. We have our time capsule up to date 
to the latest firmware with our new four terabyte drive installed and now we can configure time machine so let's uh, let's wrap things up so while I certainly would not recommend anyone using a 2008 router as their primary network router, the time capsule still works really well. It's, it's up there and it's backing up. In fact, you might be able to hear the hard drive going. It's backing up as we speak. It's wonderful. And it means that I've got another form of backup as well as external drives, external SSDs and iCloud. Now, there are a few gotchas with the time capsule. Of course it's not raid and raid's not a backup anyway but it does mean that if a drive in there fails that's my one of my backups gone so always make sure you have multiple backups always test your backups and i guess the moral of this video really is look to see what you can reuse do you need to buy new hardware or can you make use of things that you've already got you know an old desktop pc can make a wonderful true nas server if you've got some old drives you can make a wonderful nas for yourselves out of an old dell or an old compact machine or anything really there's some great guides online to doing that uh, particularly from craft computing i'll put links to those in the description um i should mention as well by the way that we're taking apart a first generation time capsule when apple moved to the ac model which became like the the cube model that thing is horrible to get into there is a video by i m n c i have to remember the initials it's my natural color he did a teardown and replacement of the uh, ac version of the time capsule and it's a lot harder do check out that video so thanks for watching if you've liked the video, please do give it a like. If you want to keep updated with all our latest videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment below. Have you replaced the hard drive in your time capsule? Have you come up with great solutions to reuse old technology? I'd love to hear from you. Head over to crosswires.net for all our latest blog posts and of course for podcast. I've got some really great guests over there right now and some more episodes being recorded literally in the next few days. Very exciting stuff. You can also follow us on Twitter at CrosswiresMG. Bye.